Don Eladio is the top dog in the Juarez cartel. He's the boss of the boss of the boss, and has the final say in basically every matter. Despite his very influential position within the cartel, we aren't shown much of Don Eladio throughout Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. But of course, a lot of you have been asking for a video exploring Don Eladio's life and money. So, here's everything we know about the Greek kingpin, Don Eladio. Starting off with his story, the earliest scene with Don Eladio is in his meeting with Gustavo and Max in 1989. Gus and Max had started a chicken restaurant named Los Pollos Hermanos or the Chicken Brothers. But aside from chicken, they also wanted to get into the up and coming market of methamphetamine. To accomplish this, Gus manipulates Don Eladio into a meeting by giving out samples of their product to Eladio's henchmen. In the actual meeting, Gus reveals that Don Eladio is simply a middle man in the cocaine business for Venezuela. From this, we can see that Don Eladio is only in charge of the transportation of cocaine into the southwest of the US and not the production itself. Despite Max being a biochemist and chemical engineer who could produce a crystallized product like glass, Don Eladio was still stuck on the fact that Gus had manipulated him into a meeting and ends up killing Max as a punishment. This event occurs in 1989, and considering that Don Eladio is already a big shot given his house and ego, it's likely that he's been in charge of the cartel for several years at this point, so we'll say about 10 years. As far as we know, the Juarez cartel was founded by Eladio, Juan Bosa, and Hector Salamanca, with Eladio being the leader. Given that Don Eladio doesn't actually ever leave Mexico, it seems like he is in charge of dealing with the Venezuelans. Meanwhile, Hector employs essentially his entire family to distribute the product within New Mexico. As for Don Bosa in Breaking Bad, he too never leaves Mexico, but this may simply be as a result of eventually partnering with Gus. In Don Bosa's early days, he may have also been hands-on into the distribution, just like Hector. Moving on, this setup continues basically all the way into Breaking Bad, as we see the cartel exclusively dealing with cocaine even through the entirety of Season 5 of Better Call Saul. It's likely that the transition into the meth business is sometime during Season 6 of Better Call Saul, as we know they're already involved in the meth trade by Season 1 of Breaking Bad. So, they make this transition sometime between June of 2004, which is where Season 5 of Better Call Saul ends, and September of 2008, which is where Season 1 of Breaking Bad picks up. We'll estimate that they get involved in the meth business in the middle of this time period, in about July of 2006. As for Gus's involvement in the business, in Season 3 of Better Call Saul, we are shown Don Eladio being pleasantly surprised with how much more money Don Bosa is able to pull in with Gus compared to Hector's income. This signals that Gus had just started working for them as Don Eladio was not used to this amount of money coming in. Given that this takes place between September 2002 and March 2003, it's likely that Gus got involved with the cartel in around the beginning of 2002. In the same meeting with Don Eladio, Hector tells Don Eladio that he's buying an ice cream shop to transport cocaine across the border, and that it is named the Winking Greek, inspired by Don Eladio. This shop doesn't last long though, as Mike takes it down quite early on. And that's basically all the stages of Don Eladio's empire. He starts the cartel around 1980, and they carry out business with cocaine at a stable rate up until 2002. At this point, Gus and Hector both up their distribution, but only Gus's distribution lives on. They continue with this higher quantity of coke up until mid-2006, and finally, they switch over to meth with Gus until mid-2009 when they all get killed. Given this timeline, let's estimate how much money Don Eladio would have made. Starting off with the volume they were moving in the first stage of the business, after Hector's ice cream shop is shut down, he expects Gus to give him a portion of his product. We are shown that Gus is able to bring in 12 packages of cocaine per shipment, and Gus's henchmen insist that Hector should get 5 packages. However, Nacho insists that Hector gets 6 or half the shipment. So it's likely that Hector was able to smuggle in 5 packages per shipment given that this is what Gus thinks is Hector's share. This actually makes sense. Don Bolsa and Hector were probably smuggling in 10 packages per shipment or 5 each. But with the introduction of Gus, Don Bosa is able to smuggle in 12 packages per shipment himself, thus largely impressing Don Eladio with Gus's 
distribution genius. Now, we don't know how much each of these packages weighs or the frequency of Gus's shipments. But one clue we do get is how much money Gus is able to give Don Eladio. From this shot, it looks like Gus is able to give 3 bundles of cash with 6 watts per row with 10 rows, or about 180 watts of cash. Assuming that these are each $10,000 wads, Gus is able to give $1.8 million to Don Eladio every single month with shipments of 12 packages. So, with 5 package shipments from each Don Bolsa and Hector, they were bringing in $1.5 per month together. Now, this amount likely already accounts for all of Don Bolsa and Hector's costs and their cuts. However, Don Eladio will still have to pay his own henchmen in Mexico and of course, the actual manufacturers themselves. A meaningful split between the manufacturers and distributors would be 50-50 as both of them are equally as integral to the business. So, about 750000 would go to manufacturers, and assuming that 20% goes to Don Eladio's henchmen, Don Eladio would be left with about $450,000 a month or $5.4 million per year. With 22 years in stage 1 of the business, this would put in $118 million for Don Eladio. Now of course, they probably had production issues here and there and had to lay low in certain periods of time, so we'll call his profit during stage 1 $100 million. As for stage 2, with Gus taking care of distribution, Gus was able to bring in 12 packages, upping the revenue to $1.8 million per month. With Don Eladio retaining 30% of this, he would get $540,000 per month or $6.48 million per year. With this stage lasting 4.5 years, this would bring in another $29.16 million or about $25 million accounting for any issues. And finally, as for the last stage of their business, in the How Much Does Gus Fring Make video, we figured out that Gus was moving about 100 pounds a week before Walter and Jesse would get involved with the Super Lab where they would up it to 200 pounds a week. And this would be the heyday of Don Eladio's business as at this point, he took over the production as they went into the methamphetamine industry. Their meth was going for $1,700 an ounce as revealed by Badger, meaning that each week, Gus was able to pull in total revenue of a whopping $2.72 million. After accounting for all of Gus's costs like distribution and dealer's cuts, we determined in the Gus Fring video that he would have approximately 30% of the total revenue to give to the cartel, meaning $816,000 for Don Eladio per week. Assuming 20% for the henchmen and 30% for his cooks, Don Eladio would get 50% of the total cartel cut, up from 30% by taking over production. This translates to $408,000 per week. Now, Gus cuts out Don Eladio about 4 months before his own death, which was on July 14, 2009. So, this setup will last for approximately 2 years and 9 months, coming out to $58.34 million. Let's call it 50, accounting for issues once again. This leaves Don Eladio with a total of $175 million, or about $150 to $200 million. So, unfortunately, Don Eladio is not a billionaire, at least not from the deals we see. However, if he controls many more segments across the US, which is quite possible, he would easily cross the billion dollar mark. Also, given how much money Gus makes for Don Eladio, Don Eladio should have just put his ego aside from the very beginning, as he would have gotten $624 million from Gus alone during those 20 years between 1989 and 2009, given that Max was a chemical engineer and biochemist who could manufacture top-notch meth. But I guess it doesn't matter as he made hundreds of millions and lived a pretty long life anyways. So how much do you guys think Don Eladio is worth? Comment that down below. Also, if you guys like the depth of this analysis, then make sure to drop a like and consider subscribing to see more questions logically answered. But until then, I'm Hari and I'll see you guys on the next one.